Okay, so let's continue where we stopped the last time. Uh, check it out. that I wanted to use a mixture of these for my thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, now I remember. I remember. I mentioned that. I definitely mentioned that. Okay, we can start with OERTS and Dissecte, somewhat famous uh, rapper group from uh, Berlin. Later on, they were known as uh, Agro, and they made uh, compilations somewhat, uh, Agro Ansage, number one till eight or so. The very first ones were actually very cool, if you into German rap and you understand the lyrics. Otherwise, I see no sense in listening to rap in other languages. Now, uh, Mind in a box, memories, I remember pre-ordering this one and personally signed by one of these dudes. I asked if he could uh, sign it with Ruor. I had an argument with a friend and it sounded like an Arteca title. That's why there is Ruor standing on the CD. The guy was asking, uh, is that really correct? Sounds kind of confusing to me. He said, yeah, that's correct. Just sign it that way. And <laughs> after some discussions, uh, he finally gave it to me with that signature. We got uh, Ostkreuz Motor Promotion CD, the single that you see right there from the album. Ostkreuz Motor. We only did uh, one album, sadly. Maybe the second album wouldn't be so bad after all. Uh, Odd Fairchild. This isn't uh, an illegal copy or something. I bought it on Bandcamp and I burned the copy on the CD. So I'll always have it somewhat as a backup. I don't know. Just felt like doing it. And I bought it back then. We got... Come on, get out there. Uh, Death in Vegas. Rocco. A uh, very psychedelic rock track that uh, first they wanted to be called uh, Dead Elvis but because of copyright claims it wasn't possible but you can see they still clung to that image blah blah mixture of a bat and uh, Elvis Presley we got uh, Fatonia and Dexter, Yo Picasso not such uh, top-notch quality rap album, but there were some tracks that I really enjoyed. Uh, what what is to mention here? Some of his uh, Benjamin Button is a funny intro thingy. I don't know from which movie. And I don't, I don't know. Just can't remember any of these titles right now. I, I know I remember it was good, but not that kind of good. Uh, Kerstin's light, burning candles, uh, burning the candle at both ends. A very progressive, housey thing. I mentioned slide before. Here he's co uh, cooperating with the Kess. Uh, there are a lot of Kess and slide tracks out there. There, they also did a lot of remixes. Especially all the freaks is very nice. All the freaks and what was the other one? Perception. Perception. Uh, you have to especially look at for the vocal edition. I don't know if this is the vocal edition. Perception. 
Uh, usually I'm not a trance fan, but this is a great trance track. Okay. So these tracks were both great, but the rest of the album, uh, not so good. We got the uh, high tone underground wobble. This was some dubstep drum and bass stuff. I just ordered it because it was cheap as fuck when shipping with another city. Don't know which the other city was. We got slide closure. Not such a good thing. Also very progressive. Usually, I know about slides, top notch quality. Dishwasher. You will always find me in the kitchen at parties. This is somewhat of a parody because some other 90s, 60s, 70s dude did a song called You Can Always Find Me In The Kitchen At Parties and the dude had another name and they just made a techno house remix thing out of it and they called themselves the Dishwasher to make it somewhat funny, you know. With a stock image or from an old series, I have no idea. Then we got Rocco Death In Vegas again because a uh, different track list. If you wanted to get all the tracks you had to purchase uh, these two editions. That's why I purchased these two editions. We got Coxbox uh, Dragon Tales. Uh, the cover says it all because uh, you have to be very fucking high on halluc hallucinogens to enjoy this album completely. But also sober, I like that sound, but this is very far out psychedelic uh, trance, you know. And, and it's a very tales from 2003, I was 12 at that time, and uh, yeah, give it a listen guys, this one's really trippy, really trippy sound, I wish they would do stuff like that, still, uh, cold cut, uh, let us replay, these are remixes, but great remixes, uh, especially Atomic Moog 2000, or, uh, Generally, the remix and the Let Us Play album are great. Uh, Cold Cut are also one of these few. You need to listen to all of the shit because they have quite a lot of good reputation and good sound. The newest album, not my style, but who knows? Uh, Schwule Mädchen by Fettes Brot. Uh, I mainly enjoyed the instrumental, but the song with its lyric weren't also that bad. It's great, uh, one of these great uh, tracks you can growl when you and your friends are drunk and everyone knows the song, of course. We got uh, Hagicht Mega Bobo. This one reminds me more of a black metal album, as you can see. You, know? you can see one of the girls from uh, music video, uh, Titan Power. And I guess one of these songs must be Titan Power, or I don't know. Little Mouse Ballerina, also great track. What else is there to mention? Uh, Mein Gehirn, Mein Gehirn, I listen to Mein Gehirn a lot. Dr. Ecstasy, also not that bad. But let's just digress. Uh, Rassephon, Ost 3, uh, Ishiku Hashimoto, uh, great anime, uh, and even somewhat greater soundtrack. Because uh, this one has uh, the Ice Prince. This uh, the Ice Prince melody. Someone goes like da 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 And uh, these uh, there are fragments of the song reworked in a very fucked up way. Sound uh, the song sounds very off at sometimes, but there are also very much new tracks. Uh, Corn issues, you know. Uh, I got uh, stitched by some fly that I don't know yesterday. As you can see, crawling in my skin. I tried to kill myself. I want to end life. I'm just so edgy. I'm 14 and I'm listening to corn. Wow. Got it. Yeah, seriously. This album was good, but not the best. Not the best. Uh, there were times where I enjoyed this one the most, but years after, it gets somewhat worse. I didn't know. Uh, for a corn record, it's not good because if you know other corn albums, this isn't top priority. I would say we got uh, Electric Six Gaba, very funny track with a very funny music video, and there is also uh, nothing to mention basically. Electric Six have a lot of uh, comedy like tracks, and know that for a fact. Slight unstable. I listened to this about, uh, I would say. 300 times in my lifetime, even more or so, 
uh, uh, every man a track is mention worthy because uh, very unique psychedelic trends really uh, it's in the no end of the 90s what was it uh, 1998 uh, we got titanium uh, these ambient sample uh, samples are also very interesting uh, 2274 there appears somewhat of a movie sample you're in the city 2274 and uh, I wish I would knew from which movie that would be because then I could watch it maybe it's a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie uh, radiation blah, blah, blah. I don't need to mention every track because they are fucking lit as fuck man 10 out of 10 every fucking track and uh, the zinc plated goddess is also very nice because made in England no one that's good you know uh, this one's especially nice because the last one is a breakbeat track very fat uh, very very fat bass and slide used to be a drummer you know he first used to be a drummer in a band and I think he played the zinc plated goddess uh, he played the drums there himself no samples I think he played that shit for himself the really heavy drums like <laughs> No stuff like that. Uh, that's what I really suggest. At least the track. If you're into side trends, listen to that fucking album again and again and again. Because I wish I could find something that is as good as this, but no, uh, no fucking chance. So this album also comes with two editions somewhat. There's a Dirty Angels edition and some other edition, or I don't know another track. Uh, and I got the other track online to make the album complete because fuck it, you know. Uh, this is the highest pinnacle I would say of side trends. You can get higher, especially goa trends. More more goa trends than side trends because side trends always sounds bit this mechanically and boring, generally speaking. Uh, talking of which, Prism, you know. Uh, I'm a big fan of trick music records. You can see it, trick music. I was uh, also communicated a little with Scorp, as I mentioned before. I mean, the album is not that bad, but it's not a 10 out of 10, I would say. 6, six out of 10. Because, yeah, if you. It's. G General Sidetrain sound, but I'm highly disappointed for trick music record. Where the fuck did I put that one? Yeah, did expect much higher of it. Ram Trilogy, Open Beats. Uh, not that good, many people praised them, Ram Trilogy, and I know they got like two or three albums. I bought this album because the last track was missing and I wanted it in high quality. So I got it uh, in a jewel case and digipack, or what the other thing is called, you know. You can see with paper round and some other track thingy. Yeah, I don't like how the camera is not... It's always blurry when I'm filming. I don't like that fucking thing. So, yeah, uh, hands around my throat. You saw before that uh, the vinyl version. This one had one or two tracks, I guess, that I enjoyed. Or I just wanted the CD version after all. I don't know. Bloodhound Gang, uh, one of the older albums. Very nice stuff. I just have to say, you need to listen to Bloodhound Gang, definitely. This is a. Uh, must listen to him, I have to say. Life is Peachy by Korn, uh, they got several awards for this. Uh, listen to it, you will know why. A lot of uh, Jonathan David's cries, how he got raped and all that shit, blah blah. But also nice songs on there. Fucking blurriness. Just shut him up. Yeah, uh, whole album, fucking uh, 10 out of 10, I'd say. Even. Beautiful lowrider cover on there also. Then we got the uh, Flowboss. Handleboss uh, has a music video and uh, the single. I bought it because some dude and uh, I was going to some kind of school. Uh, I got a special degree for high learning shit, I don't know. And this dude mentioned this song to me and I like the lyrics, the message, and uh, it's basically blah. Uh, what is it? Yeah, I can ride my bike with my handlebars and uh, I can shoot on people uh, with special technology, something like that. Uh, Shaban and Captain Peng, uh, Die Zähmung der Hüdler, 
what uh, I got introduced for this uh, while I was chatting with a dude, with a hippie, who was into Psytrance as well, and he had dreads, and he was a hippie, and what else? Uh, he showed me this. Wer bist dich? Wer bist dich? It's a pun, uh, somewhat a pun of fuck off and who am I in German. Who, you know, where bist du? Who am I? And uh, very funny video and lyrics and that's why I bought the album. Very interesting style of rapping, I gotta say that. They also have like two or three other albums but I never got really that much out of German rap, I don't know. I can't take a look in the mirror. This was a long time favorite of mine, but this is really, I think, the hardest, the harshest sound of corn ever, because they never got ever as hard as this one. Right now, break some off. Also, great album. I enjoyed every track on this. Y'all want a singer? It's very funny because uh, it's. Uh, song about how the music company always wants a singer for some three or four singles for an album and a music video of it and uh, you all want a single is a music video and has a singer and it uh, strays in some facts about music companies and how they rip off people with the single selling and how much money they make yeah great album as well Korn, generally speaking, I just want, uh, I recognize I haven't listened to Korn for quite some years now and I want to re-listen to their stuff uh, since now I'm more capable of understanding complex lyrics. Back then I listened to the sound because it was harsh, you know, the, the English words didn't come so much in the first place, but now I understand more and more greatest hits. Uh, not a big fan of greatest hits stuff, but there were some things like uh, Word Up. Then nowhere else got that song and another brick in the wall part one two three pink floyd cover very highly shortened uh, as far as i remember another brick in the wall is approximately 20 minutes long these three uh, shortened up to seven minutes and eight seconds so i want a singer uh, the other ones you know from the main albums and uh, what's also somewhat new is freak on a leash done to Ross mix but these mixes uh, most of the time they fail they are just uh, single fillers this one this one's very good I stumbled over this because of flash animation or I know that this dude is making flash animation animations uh, water flame green is the title you can't see it because the fucking camera man and this is a very interesting element I think I gotta give this a listen again because this was something else, you know, a drum and bass, techno, and uh, some other shit I enjoyed, and very creative production, and uh, this dude usually publishes not uh, like CDs, but uh, I think a lot of people asked him to do so, and that's why he released it, as far as I remember, I remember it, might be wrong though, uh, you might see him in the reflection that I got myself a haircut, uh, I think I put this somewhat like this, so that I don't forget the corn and water film. I think I need to release to that shit. Uh, yeah, uh, Cosmix Any Creature Engine. These are from the famous, uh, what is it, uh, Street? What was it? Uh, Sesame Street. Yeah, Sesame Street. Ernie and Bird. These, I think these characters, they have like 50 seasons or so, this is fucking insane man and some techno producers at the end of the 90s they said hey let's make some hardcore techno happy hardcore out of it and got like three or four of these singles some of them were better, some of these were worse mainly these are uh, songs like uh, in the show they would sing Kujian I love you so and then they sample that shit with and a uh, very fun combination though if you're high in ecstasy I think you might enjoy that stuff very much uh, Kite or Kite, I don't know, soundtrack by Paul Hepka. Uh, remake of the old anime series, which had somewhat two seasons. And uh, this one's a spin off also from an anime. So, first came the anime, no, first came the manga uh, around 1980 or 1990, then the series 1992 
2000 or 2006, I don't know. And 10 years later, Hollywood said, hey, let's, let's remake it as a movie. And it didn't flop so badly, but it didn't also do as well. I gave it a 7 out of 10. The soundtrack was very synthetic. You have to check out the police cars. There's, they sound just like synthesizers. 200% synthesizer sound very funny. This one. Uh, yeah. The anime wasn't that good either, but you could watch it if you, if you want to watch it. The second season was more funnier, lighthearted, and the first version was more uh, rough, brutal about rape and killing and all that shit. But the second season, the people have more of a glance, as you see it in more recent newer animes, you know, when the skin is like shimmering and all that shit. They did that back then, even. Start with that. We got Millen Colin, Penny Bridge Pioneers. Sweden or Norway, they come from there somewhat. Um, this is a pop punk, punk rock, indie punk album, something like that. Uh, I mainly got this because of No Cigar, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, you know, and the other tracks are somewhat okay as well, but I don't know, sometimes the sound is too happy, I just get a uh, vomiting cramps if I listen to a lot of this stuff, you know. I mean, I we got uh, Backyard Dog, Bad Astrophist. This is a nice uh, reggaeton dancehall track. Really beautiful to hear, too, because, uh, you know, whoop, 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 something like that. Then I thought, uh, how bad would it be if I purchased the album, Backyard Dog, all in a day? But mainly they boomed with Bad Astrophist. The other tracks are just uh, somewhat fillers, I don't know, they really tr didn't try hard. Some sampling, some vocals and some drums, I almost done. Not very much love put into it, I suppose. Uh, Monica Kruse and the featuring Voodoo Amt, Panorama. Uh, what was it? Yeah, not such a good techno electro album. This, uh, some customers suggested me this when I was working as a cashier at a... How would you say in English? Uh, there's a certain market just only for drinks like beer and lemonade and water and that's where I worked and that's where some customer dude suggested this for me. La Rue, in for the kill. You especially have to check out the... Mm, seventh track in for the kill uh, screams let's get ravey remix this is hardcore banger uh, seriously the original is somewhat okay but the remix of scream also did some cool other remixes in two albums and remember correctly but this remix blasts is, is all really good headbanger really good because it also has some quiet parts and some very loud parts very distinguishable you know, the, the dynamics that I usually hate, but these one progress perfectly. Just perfectly. Hydro, this dude put out like two albums. Now oh, this is a collective of two or three guys. Uh, somewhat okay, not bad. It could be better. Then we got uh, Artemine Electrine, The Second Moon, uh, basically a pseudonym of uh, Raisin Dead. Uh, Swedish. Norwegian uh, dark ambient industrial artist Peter Anderson. Have to look out because he also did a collab with another Peter Anderson. <laughs> both uh, called Peter Anderson, both do industrial, and uh, this is one of his side projects. 20 years after this album released with bonus tracks, uh, remastered high quality. Yeah, here's the other Hydro album I mentioned before. Somewhat okay. One of the albums was better, the other one was worse. I don't know which one was which. D12 Purple Pills, uh, mainly about drugs taking and being high. I listened to this track on acid, the bass fucked me away. Seriously, man. Uh, the sense of uh, American version is usually Purple Hills instead of Pills, so they didn't have to censor much. But uh, yeah, great track of D12. Wanted to listen a little bit more to D12 and Eminem, still gotten around that. Uh, Raymond, Sunshine Baby. Usually I don't like that kind of shitty fucking pop music because Raymond also did that. Uh, she's a super girl and when she sings, 
Yeah, and I think even that is a cover original. I don't know. I just fucking hate the track. And Raymond, I don't know. He has some. I think he comes from England or America. Lives in Germany. Uh, good for him, I know. I, I'm happy he's enjoying it here to stay here. But his sound, fuck man, it's just so fucking shitty. I hate it. Um, anyway, I got this because there is a sample on this, and I need it for a future track maybe. That's why I bought the single so I can get this sample. Uh, just some generic uh, reggae samples, but you get it uh, isolated on there somewhat because the song starts with this isolated sample and then builds up. That's why I got the fucking single. Otherwise, fuck it, I throw it away. But I already paid because because of that I won't throw it away. We got the Cosmics Krumer Monster Kekse and ATC. As a child, I fucking hated this track. I remember being on a children's party and this was blasting in some with Sella and some other... Oh, fuck man, it was so fucking cringy. The more I think about it, the cringier it was, was about like uh, 20 other kids and some uh, grown-ups did some sort of a DJ party and they played that track and uh, some boys fell in love with some girls and girls with some boys and uh, the track mainly builds around uh, nostalgia and feeling good back in the day, somewhat I would say, from the sound itself. This one's, uh, you guessed it, is a rip-off uh, rip or a cover from a Norway or Swens band, Sweden band. Just as I'm speaking right now, I realize how many from Norway and Sweden here I listen to right now. You know? Didn't recognize that before. And yeah, ATC around the world, uh, very fucking, fucking happy techno-ish pop shit, but one of the few tracks I enjoy, but I don't want anybody to know because I've kind of, you know, kind of embarrassing to know that sound. Uh, Ortega uh, featuring what was, you know, some other guys, uh, AOE, AEO3. Hey, yeah. Uh, experimental sound album. Give it a listen if you have nothing else to do. Otherwise, you don't miss too much. Venus Uni, a uh, Japanese duo which do side trends. One of these dudes is mainly a drummer. Some albums have a very interesting sounds. Soundscape, others don't. This isn't the best album, but there was one that I enjoyed, yeah. We got uh, Sailor Moon, Camp for Sailor Moon. <laughs> uh, this is mainly from the anime. Some German trio said, let's make, uh, let's sell a shitload of records by doing this uh, live. And I think they did it for like 10 years or so. Made quite a lot of money because of some of the... Mm, Stone concept, yeah, and uh, <laughs> shitty cosplay, man. You can see, it. yeah. A friend of mine bought it, or I bought it because the intro in the German version is also a nice hardcore techno. Nostrum 4, uh, what was that? Time Unlimited Records, that was also some acid hardcore house shit track thingy. Uh, check this one out. Seriously recommend it. I say I have a lot of CDs where, where it's advisable to check it out because if you're into my sound you will enjoy the other things too. But maybe you hate all the records I'm showing here, which would be kind of ironic if you still listen to it, I think. Yeah, Babylon Zoo, the boy with the x-ray eyes. It's not a surprise. Yeah, a Goldie remix, and Arthur Baker mix. Uh, Mention worthy, like I said before, listen to the two or three albums, watch one or two music videos. I think you might enjoy these guys. Mainly the, the front dude who seems to cross cross dress and something like that. Uh, we got Exhibit Paparazzi. The instrumental is somewhat stolen of a musical number, the, which uh, Barbara Streisand did in the 1970s, and Barbara Streisand somewhat reinterpreted it from 1800s, 1700s musical. So this is a re-re-recycled uh, instrumental with exhibits, uh, looks of it, how 
fame fucks you up and all that shit. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the song basically. Alize, moi, Nolita. Uh, she did some other stuff that didn't make her famous because it wasn't so controversial. She got a lot of fame because she was on the age at the time she put that out and it's a dance floor chart breaker since two decades or so. We got a double dipped uh, virus artist compilation. I mainly got because of Dishonor, the trip has a nice sample with the paranoia, paranoia, la 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 la. And uh, if you ever got high on acid or shrooms or weed and you, if you got in that paranoia state, you know, you know exactly how it feels. The song, the song really fits then. You know, sounds like uh, smoking bath salts for five days. Uh, Uber Tumar, Cosmodrome, also a very nice track. Want to check out more about Uber Tumar? Want to even know the samples used in there? And uh, it's a nice compilation. Nothing wrong with that, you know. Not 10 out of 10, but there were nice tracks in there. But one and uh, eight were the most outstanding, very, very most outstanding things in there. We got Panacea, German engineering. Uh, I hope I get to the SAE, Sound Audio Engineering High School thingy, because Panacea, aka Martes Moles, graduated from, graduated from there. Uh, a lot of drum and bass, noise, hardcore techno sound, very raw shit, uh, that's why I bought it, because it has also some funny skits in it. Uh, really chart floor breaker, <laughs> this is a... Uh... <laughs> no seriously, you won't hear a lot of these tracks, because even back then this was really hardcore shit. Low Profile Darkness, an album I need to purchase in the future. Uh, was re-released with some, some bonus tracks, but only the Japanese version, so I have to import it, which costs extra money, maybe. I want to get that album too, because the low profile darkness is even more enjoyable for me personally. More simplistic sound, but more raw, hardcore. Over just, This is very diverse, you know? Not that it's bad, this is even you know, 9 or 10 out of 10, but the low profile darkness uh, fits more into my personal category. Uh, this one also highly uh, recommended, listen to this also, quite sometimes when I was jogging, running around, uh, very hardcore tracks on there. We got another Korn album, my personal favorite over all these years. Uh, the music video of Freak on a Leash, I don't know, uh, what was the other one? Got the life. Got the life of Freak on the Leash. Some of these music videos are in a cartoonish style. These, uh, and uh, if you watch the music videos, you will understand the album cover, you know, uh, somewhat. And uh, follow the leader, you see the leader is jumping off the cliff and everyone's following and some kids, uh, some very interesting artwork and all that shit. My favorite album of all the time because this had a really cool sound. Some guests, a guest artist on it, Limbiscuit, some other rapper dude, uh, uh, some bagpipes, very new metalish sound. Uh, and you see it starts with track 13 because it's a continuation of another another album. Album? I don't know. Was it, was it Life is Peachy or... I have no fucking idea. But that's why it, start with, it starts with 13. When you play the record, 1 to 12 are tracks that are silenced, you know, 5 seconds of silence or so, or 12 seconds. And then the, at number 13 the album starts, 25 my gift to you is uh, 3 minutes of the same song, my gift to you. Then there's about 10 minutes of silence or so, and 2 minutes some other song. I know a lot of new metal bands did that, Slipknot also did this. 50 minute tracks at the end because a 3 minutes of a song, I don't know, 7 or 8 minutes, then 10 minutes silence and then some 5 minute song or 1 to 5 minute song, something appear like that. Always then there. This. We got Cradle of Fear. Oh, I have to stand up, my fucking legs are killing me. 
Trail of Fear, uh, soundtrack of the movie. Movie was not that cool, a lot of slash, gore stuff, but storyline, fuck the storyline, man. Uh, I mainly got this because I thought there would be, there's some hot, there's one or two hardcore genre tracks on the, in the movie, which you can't hear on the CD, of course. The track that uh, made me purchase the album isn't on there, as usual, as it goes with soundtracks. But uh, on IMDb there's also no entry, what, what's the name of the song? Yeah, the movie was somewhat funny and hilarious and uh, the album, I don't remember much of it, you know. Just got it so I can share it with others. We got Cosmics, Annie and Friends, Sesame Street Remix album. Oh fuck yeah, I got a whole album of this with the hardcore tracks that they did Cosmics, yeah from Sesame Street we got Korn the very first Korn album which is called Korn very creative uh, also very nice album very raw hardcore sound uh, you can hear it's the first record it's not bad but uh, I don't know you hear it's the first record and I like that about them no sellout sound not that the other ones don't have salad sound, but they sound more professional in some would regard. But professional or not professional is not the point here. The point is that uh, it's a good album, you know. And also, like I mentioned before, uh, Teddy, what was it? Last track on here. Also, again, five minute song, ten minute silence, five minute song. I fucking hate that shit. These guys fucking need to stop it. This should be, this should be illegal. This should be banned, you know. We got uh, the Worship Days of Decision. Uh, from my working space, uh, the chef I got uh, has a son, and the son is playing live, and uh, this is one of the two bands, there's some other record thingy there, uh, very generic sound, I don't remember anything of it, this is the most generic shit ever, this should be sellable in the millions, because it has such a fucking generic sound. Then we got uh, Armand Tobin. Uh, verbal remixes and collaborations. I mainly got this because other people didn't have it. I'm in Tobin, you need to know everything about this guy. A lot of these album covers look the same, some mechanical devices, split or complex, or some strange artwork. Uh, there were some tracks in there that were cool, but basically I bought it because of Alan Tobin. Less of the tracks on there, but I suppose they're also good. Just don't remember it right now. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I'm just an Alzheimer redude, forgetting everything I fucking touch. We got Billy Talent, some edgy American uh, indie pop punk shit band. You know, uh, back in the days when I was 15 or 16, I really enjoyed. Uh, Red Flag and uh, Fawn Leaf, so what was it? Yeah, and Burn the Evidence. Uh, they have a nice mixture between generic sound and unique melodies that stuck in your head for weeks or months. Yeah, that it was very important. I know they have around four or five albums now. I thought they would stop after the second one because they made enough money and would just stop, you know? But no, they continue, which is somewhat a plus. Otherwise, on the, on the other hand, if their sound is too commercial, just fuck it. Yeah, we got Marky Mark once again, No Mercy. I showed you the vinyls before. Really big fan of these two tracks. Uh, Nine Inch Nails with Teeth. Not even the best album I got here. Basically, I need to have every fucking Nine Inch Nails record. I listen to Nine Inch Nails way too much, way too fucking much, I can't stop. Like for five years now, I've been listening to every fucking album on a row, backwards and forwards and on random, and then the soundtracks and this fucking dude, Trent Reznor, man. I would, I would fucking suck his cock every day just so he would put one single track out, you know. Fucking love this dude, Trent Reznor, man. Best fucking guy in the world knows how to produce records, especially in combination with uh, Atticius Ross. Uh, he, he's making good music like 30 or 40 years now in a row. The only thing which sucked, which really, really sucked, was his side project with his wife. 
uh, phone angels or what was it welcome to oblivion angels something and that shit was whack was really really whack uh, if he does things on his own hand this is really cool you know, I think this one even has some sci-fi story into it but seriously man listen to every fucking track of this guy he's a game changer <clears throat> was also somewhat uh, friends at time, sometime with a Marilyn Manson. Uh, I don't have any Marilyn, Mar Marilyn Manson records here, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, I also enjoy Marilyn Manson sounds, but I don't have any CDs because, well, I'm a poor fuck. Uh, Soulfly, Bleed, uh, nice singer, he got me introduced into the Br Brazilian band, Max Cavalera, yeah, ex Sepultura. Sepultura is also mention worthy. Because they also have some great albums, uh, you can listen to all the Soulfly stuff, but the first album is cool, the first three, three or four albums are cool, the newest stuff, mm, I don't know, I don't know, it's good, but not that good. Also, I need to listen to Fear Factory again, just remembering, yesterday I mentioned Fear Factory, made a joke with my friends, they laughed about it, and uh, I need to listen to Fear Factory again, I fucking love Fear Factory. Have also a great sound. Helmet, Betty, uh, very muddy, noisy metal. <laughs> I like the, the happy cover of the woman collecting flowers, uh, smiling, and uh, very heavy, 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 slow, slowish, uh, hypnotic metal, you know, almost rainbow. This is also a 10 out of 10 album. When I listened to this, I was 14 or 15, blown away, blown away by the sound man never heard something like that before. I, I didn't even know something like this existed, you know. I'm really happy to know oh, that this record exists. Helmet has a lot of cool albums. This is one of my favorites, definitely. And uh, some others, yeah. But let's digress to Judas Priest. I need to listen to more Judas Priest. Uh, they have around 30 or 40 albums now. I listen to two or four uh, yeah these one weren't so bad i thought just generic records let's buy it just listen i don't know i won't enjoy it but i enjoyed it actually uh, we got uh, system of the down hypnotize uh, and mesmerize these two albums you have to stick together usually they come as separate cds and just found it out by myself you have to stick it out together I was blown away by the fact back then that you had to do stuff like that. One is a CD only, and the other one is a CD and DVD. I think this is the CD and DVD one. No, very uh, system of down. Always keep kept the sound. I don't know. This is from 2005 or six. After that, they stopped completely. Somewhat. I think they are still doing live gigs, but. Uh, at these two albums, especially at the second one that appeared later on, you will realize they forced themselves into making two albums. And at some points it's getting quite generic, and uh, if they've kept on another album, they might have uh, just lost their sound completely and would have been just boring, repetitive, uh, repetitive shit. Now wait, just having to twist it this way. We got Dream Injection Volume 3. Uh, there's Dream Injection 1 to 6 out there. Uh, I got the volume 3 because my brother uh, was stealing back then from us when I was living with my well mother, like I'm doing right now. Uh, and uh, he was stealing shit from us, but he somewhat forgot or left the CD in the CD player. And there were some great and amazing tracks that introduced me to electronic music when I was like 10. I didn't know about also very, very funky shit about uh, what was cool. Or Orbital is even there, Halcyon on and on, great track, uh, Lobe, I listen to Lobe, uh, CJ Bolland, Conspirito, uh, what else is there to mention, Bowman Hannan did a lot of interesting stuff, but I only got CD2, I remember I only had CD2, uh, Red Sector A was interesting, Cosmic Baby Träume, Resistance D was, I don't know, Zoma Corporate Anthem was very interesting. FX Twin On, Usage Remix 
not the best sound, but it introduces you into music and FX Twin. Back when both of them did stuff in the same time, it Dream Injection was also not that bad. But uh, it introduced me into electronic music and uh, what you're capable of if, if you wanted to do something new. You know? That's the important thing. We got the Prodigy, their law, the singers, 1990 to 2005. I also purchased this earlier, 2005 or so, or six. Uh, mainly singles and uh, what they did in music videos and all that shit. Do you know a lot of them? You too have some more rare tracks and some live tracks on there. Uh, it's an okay compilation, but uh, the albums always stick out, you know? Prodigy never did a bad album. That's a fucking fact. Yeah. And uh, just just by the albums, maybe, and the singles from somewhere else. Yeah, some generic Goa Trans Volume 23 release. I think they're at 60 or 70 now. It's getting more and more progressive, meaning it's just one fucking song. It's some it's in true of the Lish to Light, very interesting stuff on there. But, um, these uh, compilations are actually great if you're into DJing as a progressive trans DJ or something like that. Otherwise, as a listener, I don't suggest stuff like that. Because uh, you can basically mix every track with every track. Even though there are some unique uh, unique productions, like uh, Ace Ventura, Lish to Light, or what was I, I, Asterix Poison but then you see Wreck Machines remix so the original Asterix Poison very interesting it's just uh, there should be some names you should know at this point Psytrain Royal Rumble I don't know Psytrain stole a lot of shit they didn't really invent a lot of new sound but let's not talk about it otherwise I, I just become a Debbie Downer what I can do at this point is pack in the CDs. So we got Fear Factory, Corn, and Water Flame. I just need to remember that shit. Then we have uh, Analog Pussy, uh, Trance and Roll. Great album. They have a lot of great albums actually. Very cool sound. Uh, Eris and I know, Eris and I, Gino, yeah, that was the name of these two guys. Giga and Gino. Giga and Gino, you, you can see it if the camera... Fuck you. Don't fuck with me, yeah. And uh, they also have a great sound, I remember Gino was the dude, I guess. I wrote with him because on this box, if you buy CDs, uh, newly packed, you buy it directly from Gino, you know, he does uh, live stuff, performs live, he gets a lot of synths. He has a studio in Germany, Hamburg, I don't know where, but somewhere in Germany, or Berlin. And uh, he asked me if I could buy him a vaporizer, and he could give me the CDs. Then I told him, nah, that would be too expensive and too much time consuming, but thanks anyway for the offer. Cool dude. And I also wrote with Chica, I guess, because I made some reviews about Analog Pussy Underground. Maybe I got this record somewhere, but the Underground stood out the most for me personally. This one is very complex in its sound, you know. This has very complex parts to it, but complex doesn't mean good, you know. That's the most important part. We got Future Remixes, Analog Pussy. Um, yeah, these are remixes by some kites, SBK, Sharigama, EDL. This is just one song remixed, you know. So, there's that. Oh yeah, there's the CD. Beautiful. There it is, my personal favorite. I might even want to re-listen to this again. Uh, Analog Pussy Underground. Very interesting minimalistic uh, mixture of yeah, minimalistic techno and uh, side trends. This one uh, is a really headbanger. Uh, you wouldn't think that uh, with this little uh, of samples you would get such a good sample. They somewhat did it, you know. This is a really nice album, I gotta say. 
We got a vinyl tracks. What was the one hanging myself comfortably? Yeah, underground, blah blah blah. There are only a few tracks, one or two tracks that you might not know, and that's why I got it. Okay, compilation. It's more of a compilation, I'd say. Uh, Psycho Beat from Hell. Very hardcore stuff to bang your head with. Uh, this is also a nice album, seriously. Give these guys a listen if you're into side trends. Then we got. Oh boy. Joy Division, Unknown Pleasures. Everyone hypes their sound, but. Uh, I don't know what was the one. Lawful Tears Apart is okay, but I enjoyed the Square Pusher cover more. And uh, She Lost Control was the other cool track, but other than that, meh. Overhyped. Just fucking overhyped. This is like this is like Star Wars of the CDs if you compare it, you know? Star Wars of the albums. Fuck me. Check it out how it's wobbling. We got uh, Blue Lips by that that charge. Uh, very. This is actually a singer. I enjoyed the track very much. Very funky. Very very funky. Gotta give this a listen, guys. Ch type it in YouTube. Do yourself th something good. Listen to it. We got uh, the Van Vegas Twist and Crawl single uh, from the album. That uh, Elvis, uh, nice, with some nice remixes on it, I suppose, otherwise I wouldn't have purchased it. Or the remixes are shit, I don't know. Uh, Gigi D'Agostino, La Passion, inclusive new remix and video. Uh, Lento by Lento style that he created, uh, Slow and Hot, is basically the meaning of this uh, from Italian, uh, some Italian dude. Uh, he's even still now somewhat active, but back then he put out album after album, he was more into album producing than ever. Okay, what else do we have here? We got Fotec Form and Function, uh, interesting DB album. Fotec had some nice. Or was this the only album that was interesting? The other one sucked? I don't know. But uh, I got this one cheap, and that's why I got it. Because it's never wrong to know more DB artists. Café Del Mar, a compilation sent by my aunt. Uh, what was it? A volume 5, so volume 5, compiled by Jose Padilla. Uh, breakbeat, new wave, ambient stuff, usually not bad, but uh, very generic sound, right? Yeah. Nothing much to remember by. Yeah. Just some chill I don't know. I always have some kind of hatred against Coffee Del Mar compilations. Maybe that's the yeah. Uh, Corn Untouchables, not the best album. Might be even the second or third worst. But the newer stuff is even worse than that. You know, back then I hated this album the most because it had like three or four good tracks. The other are shit. You know, but even three or four tracks is a lot. Usually I listen to an album and no, no track sticks out. You know, but. This one had a couple of tracks that I enjoyed. We got uh, Kissogram vs. Woody. If I had known this before, uh, this has a music video, very generic music video. But the lyrics and the message of the song, uh, you got to give this a try. Yeah. Stuck in my head. Uh, also, Berlin produced. Nice to know, huh? Well, which kind of sound uh, comes from Berlin or England? We got the very best of. Beach Boys, yeah, Beach Boys, uh, never, are, ne are never wrong when, uh, when you're high on psychedelics, good vibrations, California, wouldn't it be nice, the fucked up beginning at the track, you know, this, uh, if I look this, seriously, I should look this, this, uh, wouldn't it be nice, what was it, going? yeah, wouldn't it be nice, number four, I think I should sample this because it's so, so fucking fucked up. So let's keep this one out. Uh, so they stronger than pride. Found to sell trash. Uh, they actually made somewhat okay soul and funk R&B records, but not my sound. So there's that. Then we got 
the woman that is living with volcanoes, the one of the hottest milfs, I think she's 50 now, holy shit, but she's so goddamn attractive and bangable and she has a nice sound, basically everything about this woman is attractive, she's crazy and she's good looking, what else do you want? This is a nice album, but not the best. I just bought it because of the cover. You know, she always dresses up in these weird dresses. That's kind of uh, her stuff, her style. I get it, but well. Work is just work. Uh, what else? Oh, very hardcore stuff. My first and last Ortega album ever. Uh, uh, I'll take a with a track list on the back. Very hardcore stuff. This is a good album, but if you're a beginner of IEM, you might want to throw this in the trash. This is very hardcore. Uh, I highly recommend you get into this album after two years or so. It took me six months to get in the very early records because Arteca can be very hardcore at some time, at some point. And this is even one of the softer records nowadays, they got even harder because creating longer tracks, more randomized, computer generated, this is really, whoa, this is medium, you know, this is rare medium stake in regards to other albums of their kind. Scatman, skibi dibi bop, boop dibi bop, boop dibi beep, the tingles go ra, you know. Scatman John, you should know this one, I don't need to mention it, if you don't, Fuck off, yeah, KLF, the walk around the, the book, how to get your number one hit. Uh, nice to know this one. Uh, Hagicht, Leco Grande, uh, very nice album, not the best, but Hagicht, yeah, that's that. Okay, I've got 24 minutes left on the battery, I hope I'll make it. Uh, ZenZD, uh, this is a compilation of ZenTune records, oh yeah, on the front you can even see the tracklist maybe, let's see, will you sharpen fucker, will you fucking sharpen, huh? oh yeah, no, now it's working, so, uh, this has nice tracks on there, might consider to check it out again, uh, Spectacular, my my kleine Schwester. This is just an edgy track I bought because it's so funny. <laughs> it's just so fucking trashy. All these uh, 30 or 40 years old trying to sound like 10 year olds or something. This is just somewhat the the camera, the battery smells like it's melting, man. I hope this won't happen, this one would be not so nice because this fucking camera cost around 500 years man, way too fucking expensive. Uh, System of a Down, steal this album, uh, sadly I didn't steal this album, <laughs> uh, very nice tracklist, uh, also one of my favorites, uh, even the end show, or the splendid pie, pizza pizza pie, wait, take us knee. To sneeze because of all the dust that's falling off from the CDs and all the shit I'm touching you, even though I planned it, cleaned it one or two weeks before. Yeah, very nice album. Uh, check it out. Says no from down. You need to listen to all of this stuff. The, the in Vegas, Fair Big Life. I mainly get this because it's a limited promo edition to show you with other guys and uh, the track list on there. Yeah. Matthew Johnson, Marionette is the only track I would highly suggest at this point because it's cool the other uh, stuff not not my Michi Kid Paul and the Weird Club featuring Hitman Acid in My House very uh, poppy acid house track uh, this dude later made uh, Café Del Mar Energy 52 uh, this uh, he he never has to work, I guess, because everyone's remixing this fucking track. If you type in Café Del Mar or what, what is, yeah, Energy 52, 
you'll recognize the song. This dude made the original song to it that everyone is remixing and re-remixing and uh, yeah. Doesn't mention anything anymore, yeah. I'll make make anything new anymore. Yeah, Coxbox Forever After. My somewhat of my personal favorites of Coxbox, uh, the first album. On this album there were three guys. Later on there was uh, were only two and then there's only Frank E left that did the new album 2015 or 16, which kind of sucked. Yeah. Uh, 2015, I guess. Yeah. And uh, this is a 10 out of 10. So a 10 out of 10. Even the singers of these Coxbox tracks, I got uh, into Coxbox by <laughs> uh, Emule and Bearshare and LimeWire and all these legal peer-to-peer -peer programs. Because of that I got into this very nice psychedelic group from uh, Denmark. Uh, uh, this is uh, Westman featuring Nena, Old School Baby. Beautiful music video. Here are snippets of the music video in a cartoonish style, and the track itself is also blasting. Berlin made track. Westbam also did a lot, of, a lot of tracks for Love Parade, and has a lot of pseudonyms. Westbam still is doing a lot of shit. This dude never stops really with making music. I wish I could get on his level of producing on that album because. Well, it's never resting, you know. Uh, group Take On, this more of a funny single album thingy, more comedy from T4 to Tar. Also, somewhat of a live stand up comedy show. And this is very fucking old. This is from 2000 or two, uh, 1999. Very Polish uh, RB track. Listen to it, and if you maybe if you understand German, you, you break out in laughter. And that's why I got this for 99 cents or so on Amazon. That was definitely, definitely worth the money. We got another experimental Ortega album like we got on... Wait, oh fuck, I knew this would fucking happen. Like on there, this was the other one. This, there are three of these ones out there. Fuck man, some even had cool pictures on there. Fuck it, I rip it off. I don't, I don't care. Every one of them cost me like 30 or 50 euros, man. Fuck. I don't know which one has which weight. Give me a second, I'll check out the booklet. Of these records. Oh boy. Two CDs, CD1, CD2. Fuck you, fuck you, man. It looks like I'm fucking with my records in purpose, but just everything is falling out at this point. This is just embarrassing. I think I'm the worst collector out there because I'm thrashing all my stuff. Um, I show you guys it to, to the camera like this because. Uh, Otherwise, I won't be able to. Uh, we got like these are the somewhat pictures that came with it with the first CD. You no know, strange pictograms of audio waves. I have no idea. Just basic random Ortega stuff. Just give me a second. I have to sneeze out a little. We got 17 minutes left until the uh, battery is dying. Okay. Let me pack in this first one, then we get to the second and the third one. Uh, usually I wouldn't show you guys this, but I just remembered immediately that they did a lot of strange shit on these albums. Yeah, that's what they did. That's what they're known for. Oh fuck man. I get the feeling of thrashing everything here. Okay. 
Luckily, I ripped everything. So, even if it's thrashed, I still got a digital copy. Also nice to know is now, uh, I fucked it up that badly that uh, I can't sell it in a good condition anymore. This is now a very, very fucked up condition. Why? Because you can't pack out these things normally. Oh, fuck, man. I'm packing the first one in. Oh boy, give me a break. Where's the wire? It's there. Just putting it in there because I'm getting tired of this shit. It even has a special limited seal. And then a fucker like me comes around and breaks it all off. Okay, go in the fucker and be quiet. We go to the second one. That is like this, this, this. The Here we go, nice. Um, we got the CD, looks like this, quite normal, not too normal though. Um, number one and number two. Hefla Trio, now I remember the name, Hefla Trio, or the other guys. Otaka featuring Hefla Trio. These are the, oh boy, do you have the pictures uh, of the second, uh, of the second, of the second, DVD, CD, one is a DVD, you know, what the fuck, you yeah. know, oh, you have to smell the ink, oh, this, this is getting me high, man, the smell of the fucking ink. Okay, that is the second one. Let's put a third one. Okay, go in there, go in there. This is pure torture for your fingers to put in that shit, man. I think this is some kind of bad joke. Very, very bad joke. Yeah, let's get this one here and this one on there. That fucker in. And then there's the third one. And they're all packed in the shitty little cartridge box thingy. Yeah, there it is. Uh, okay, the CDs also look normal, but here you get the audio excerpts like this one. Oh, sharp, not sharp. Wait a minute. <laughs> Everything in distance. Oh, this looks better. Stuff like that. You know, audio file waveform thingies. I don't know what they did. In there. Didn't smell that much like ink, which is a minus. I just want to get high on that fucking ink. Oh, well, let's check out the other shit I've got. Just want to finish up the staple. I hope it's possible before the battery dies. We got 12 minutes left. 12 minutes is not a lot of time. Stopped it there. Then we got Indelible, Squid Ink, also another good album by Trick Music. Uh, I think I'll stop following these guys because not so much good stuff. Molly Lolita, also another single thingy from the other Alize thingy. I got this because of other remixes as usual. We got Disturbed, The Sickness. Ooh, uh, 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 not such a bad album, but not so good either. As far as I know, the drama is into all the programming and directing. Uh, the newer stuff. 
is just pure garbage, man. We got uh, Andy Wall and the Velvet Underground and Nico. 45th anniversary remastered edition of yeah, uh, the album here. Produced by Andy Wall. Yeah, Sunday morning, waiting for the man. Beautiful psychedelic rock album. Heroin, beautiful track. This uh, 10 out of 10 psychedelic rock time in the 1970s. I read somewhere that when this album dropped, everyone uh, was hyped for Andy Warhol producing the album, and then everyone listened to it and said, Whoa, holy fuck, that sounds shitty. And after some years, some guy said, Hey, this, this is really cool, and then uh, it became a fucking hit. Uh, An Undershake Restart compilation. An Undershake has a lot of very melodic psychedelic trance albums. Uh, I got this compilation just because it's a compilation rarely kind of, kind of hard to get a grip on. Uh, the compilation itself is not that good because it's a compilation, you guessed it. But uh, other than that, uh, An Undershake has great sound and you see some very poorly edited 3D graphics on there, so there's that also. So we get to the limits of control. Uh, soundtrack uh, for the Jim Jarmusch movie. Uh, very nice psychedelic tracks on there. Also some world and country folk music. You should give this a try because it has very interesting tracks on there. You know, just because of this, and I really like the minimalistic touch of the movie. Uh, we have Der Verfall, The Decay. Angst im Wald, uh, Fear in the Forest, uh, Hard Trends Project uh, from some German dude, very funny lyrics partially, the Mussolini a cover of uh, Deutsche Amerikanische Freundschaft, uh, some really cool remixes and a mega mix. A lot of guys do these mega mix things where they use the whole album and mix it in a big track. This is recycling on the same album, this fucking sucks, man. Um, we got Sisex remixed and instead of the usual remixed albums, usually remixed albums sound like shit and nothing special at all, but these remixes are actually quite good and uh, also highly recommendable if you're into Psytrance. The original tracks are a bit better, but uh, Violet Vision, by the way, has some very experimental tracks. I mentioned the vinyl before. You want a cookie? Here's a cookie. Take your fucking cookie. <laughs> You know, um, Violet Vision has some very interesting stuff. GMS or the Coca Cola or McDonald's of Psytrance. Somebody said on Discogs, and I say, I think I gotta say, uh, this, this is a fitting comment. GMS did the most generic uh, psychedelic trend stuff. And I also heard or read somewhere that one of the two GMS guys died uh, some weeks ago because he had a rare blood or bone disease and uh, now he's dead. Now he could make some jokes, uh, good for us because now he can put out shitty music but uh, I kind of feel sorry for this guy because you know he died uh, uh, releasing shitty generic trends. But back in the day the very first tracks were very cool. Eskimo, you should know Eskimo, Domestic Pixel, they are actually quite shit, but on this remix, pretty good. Uh, okay, I don't mention the other guys because blah. Buckethead Acoustic Shards, uh, Bucket has, uh, Buckethead has, has around, I don't know, 100 albums, released in just 20 years or so. Uh, nowadays he's a little bit quieter, but back then he released uh, one album per day, which is fucking insane. This dude has a lot of talent, especially with the guitar, a little bit with piano and drums, but very nice uh, acoustic guitar album, but makes me feel like an old dad enjoying his coffee. We got another a Cosmics Ernie and Bernd Quietsche Entchen remix thing mentioned before. Then we got the Scorp, uh, the first Scorp album that I really enjoyed. Very unique sound. Special Liquid 30.5 hours. The, the Aquarium is a cover of Saint Seance, the Aquarium. The original and this cover somewhat here are mention worthy 
very nice old school Goa trance, uh, recorded in the UK of course, by Eddie Connor, the side trance uh, genius of the 21st century, if he would ever make another album, which he doesn't. Let us play, uh, in regards to Let Us Replay, this is the original, which has even a program in it where you can learn to video scratch with some video samples, yeah, and some audio samples and funny software. Kind of nice what they tried here. I know they also tried uh, some DJ program or visual, visual DJ program back then, and you could even install it from the CD. This is kind of nice that they all did this just for the fans. Hoping a fan would actually do this. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, the yellow album, a parody to uh, the Beatles, the white album. Or I don't know, Jay-Z, the black album. Uh, I can't remember. Or DJ Grey Mouse. No, DJ Mouse, the best of pop mashup album, the Grey album. No, it's just a parody of, I guess, the Beatles album. SpongeBob, uh, I'm a big SpongeBob SquarePants fan, especially the old stuff, very unique comedy and humor on it, uh, music from the movie and more. I just mainly got these because uh, there were cool tracks in it, I guess. Yeah. Um, if you know, know me a little bit, you know how big of a SpongeBob SquarePants fan I am because, seriously, I don't know a lot of cartoons that can compete with SpongeBob. We got uh, Heinz Strunk. Sie nannten ihn Draht, they called him a uh, tricycle. Uh, we're gonna see this dude uh, in October live doing stand up comedy or something like that. Cabaret. Um, I know he played in uh, another funny comedy band, uh, Fractus. Maybe you'll see the album in the next minute spot, guys. I gotta stop at this point because the battery has only 4 minutes left and I know where I have to progress the next time, so there's that. See you the next time. Bye guys. Uh, yeah.